And welcome to part two of Invasion of the Philippines. Judging from the ticket count on both sides, we've still barely made a dent in this map. There was very little ticket bleed at the beginning since we captured a flag so quickly. Um, this is one of those maps where one side has, in theory at least, an, an uncapturable base and the other side has to defend. The Japanese uncapturable base is its destroyer though, which can be sunk. So it is possible for this map to last about 30 seconds if the Americans manage to sink the destroyer before the Japanese get any spawn points and everyone gets killed. The Japanese destroyer respawns, but it takes a couple minutes to do so. So if all the Japanese die while the destroyer is waiting to respawn, then that is technically a cap out. And it functions the same way as if the Japanese get all the flags. Okay, I guess that guy was firing at me from that mounted machine gun way the heck over there. Wondered where that was coming from. It's very... wow, look at that. The Americans have already retaken both the small island and the airfield right next to it. It's very rare for the Japanese to manage to get all the flags. And here you can really see how the engineer rifle really comes in handy at those mid to long range firefights, especially if the other guy's just got a machine gun. Seems like all the Americans are spawning in over here. This map is so spread out among so many different islands that I've seen only a couple instances of the Japanese getting all of the flags at once, even to inflict ticket bleed on the American side. So this map tends not to have ticket bleed as a factor whatsoever. And since it's also very spread out, the kill counts tend to be fairly low. So this map is likely to go on for a very long time. Good little use of teamwork there as I was uh, doing cover fire with that uh, friendly machine gunner. You really have to... I think this map, more than most of the other ones, really encourages teamwork. Because when you get spread out and split up among these different islands, you really have to rely on your teammates to help you out. And sometimes you'll move from point to point on the same island with that same teammate. Okay, the Americans have this flag, so that's why they're spawning in. And I'm just about... I'm out of ammo for my rifle, so that's not a good thing. Looks like I was early on the detonation there. I noticed just when I was in the uh, respawn screen there, there are a lot of American patrol boats out and about. Almost every single spawn point has at least one patrol boat. Only the landing beach doesn't spawn one, and several of them spawn two patrol boats. And as often happens, when uh, each side holds one of those... Wow, there's a lot of guys over here. Really gonna have to stay on the move. And I killed the teammate, but at least I killed the hostile as well. Whenever the um, opposing teams hold one each of the Point Boyington and Airfield flags, there's always a lot of action focused around there. Traditionally speaking, this flag over here is the one that the Japanese tend to go for first, 
especially back in the days when the destroyer faced the opposite direction because there's a little landing zone right up in the northeast corner and it's a very useful flag it has two patrol boats as well as one landing craft for some reason way to approach the airfield is to swing around from the southern side and attack from where the patrol boats are harbored. You're always going to give yourself away to a certain extent because the patrol boat will leave an empty vehicle icon when you get out of it. But you can minimize that problem by parking it right at the harbor. It'll be facing the wrong direction but hopefully people won't notice that. So I'll park it in just like uh, that boat would spawn in. And of course, it's also going to be a little bit uneven as you go up uh, onto the beach. Attacking the airfield flag is very difficult, especially when you're alone and you don't have a short-range weapon, simply because most of the time the airfield will be extremely occupied. I've already seen a number of infantry over there, and they would not be happy to know that someone is going to try to take that flag from them. If the airfield flag is threatened, even the plane campers occupying that area will become aroused and attack. Since the Americans have the land and beach flag, they're not using their death camp. Some ugly shots over there. I should have gotten that guy. At any moment, people could start spawning in at any of these houses. Maybe having these X packs and being able to detonate them if people spawn in there possibly could be useful. Alright, the flags turn neutral, so they're all going to be stirred up. And I actually managed to turn the flag, though. I'm sure that they're all going to rain down on me. But it seems I've got some support, at least, from a number of other Japanese infantry who've shown up out of nowhere. like the plane campers were trying to make off of the plane. That'll be the last time it spawns over here while it was still friendly to them. Hmm, I thought there had been an ammo crate in here. I guess not. Since the Americans hold that Point Boyington, yeah, there's a grenade. There's going to be a lot of counterattacking from the Americans now. You can use these jeeps, which have been modeled for the Japanese to cross the bridge very quickly, but you've always got to stay on the lookout for landmines. People like to put them on the bridge. Once I saw that I was followed, I figured, yeah, I'm definitely dead here. So I just tried to get a couple kills at least before they got me taken down. one kill with these X-Packs, but it can be pretty difficult. Often it's just easier. Well, see, that guy was a sniper, so I didn't really have to worry about it. 
I've been practicing a little bit with the engineer rifle in advance of making a video for Philippines because I knew I was going to go in as an engineer. But uh, I haven't gotten much use of those X packs. I'm going to take out a patrol boat, I think, and head to the other flags. Stay tuned for part three.